Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today I'm here with Brian, and Brian is going to demonstrate three techniques to take your game to the next level. Am I right, Brian? That's correct. Yeah, so the technique is going to be from? The mount. Mount position. But before you do that, before you show you the three techniques to take your game to the next level, I'm going to ask you a favor. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please subscribe. And also give us the thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that bell below, because if you don't do that, the YouTube doesn't send you a notification when we upload a new video to our YouTube channel. All right, everyone, before we show you the technique, Brian has a story, the reason why he got so good with the skates from the mouth position. And I'm going to pass to Brian. Brian is going to tell us the story. Brian, please tell us the story now, why you got so good with the mouth skate. Thank you, Cobra. All right, guys. So today I'm going to be showing you some details from the uh, mount position from the bottom. I'm going to be showing you how to escape. And uh, the reason why I feel comfortable about these details is because throughout the years of my jiu-jitsu training, I've spent it uh, defending myself, mostly you know, in, in my white belt years, uh, just being smashed all the time uh, and really having to know how to properly defend myself and properly get out of positions so that I can keep on doing jiu-jitsu rather than just tapping and tapping and tapping. So hopefully uh, these details will help you guys and um, it will help you uh, enjoy jiu-jitsu a little bit more too. All right, guys, so Cobrinha is going to put his hand inside the collar because from the mount position, you know, you have the collar choke. It's a great stable way for the attacker on top to be able to uh, keep on advancing his leg work as well as the submission if it's there. So as the, as the defender here on the bottom, I'm going to defend myself preemptively from the choke by inserting my thumb to kind of line up with Cobrinha's wrist right here so that in the case that he does get the other side of the choke, I still have some breathing space right here on this side so that uh, I can survive. Right, can you really demonstrate to them the grab again? Absolutely. Just grab my wrist. Grab so, my wrist. Yes, right, that's the grab he's having on my wrist. And as I go to his collar, like Brian was saying, it's hard for me to get to the other side. Yeah, if I do so, he still can block, right, by pushing. Perfect, I like this detail. Thank you, Brian. All right, guys, so again, preemptively defend yourself from the choke. Watch out for the opponent's other arm. Maybe you can follow it. Don't extend your arm too far because that's a free arm bar right there. So I'm going to be kind of being vigilant, hooking when it's, when it's available to hook the, the opponent's arm. If it's not, then just kind of keeping the arm down, making sure that you're defending yourself well. I'm going to next lay down one of my legs. It's important, guys, not to lay down your leg on top of the opponent's leg because you're actually trapping yourself in the mount. Here, Cobrinha likes this. He's making a hook on the underside of my leg. He can just stay in the mount as long as he needs. So, this is a black belt level detail. You got to be aware of this. Lay your leg down on the mat. I'll make the timing here. Once you lay your leg down, I'm going to use my foot on the floor to push, generate power, and lift my hips up and tilt it to face towards the camera here. You see now, I'm not quite on, on the flat of my back. I am facing on my side here. All right, guys. And so now, something that is kind of difficult for a lot of people, and I know it was very difficult for me, is to be able to work your elbow on the inside of your opponent's thigh right here. This is something that's not easily done. And you're going to be able to help yourself get this 
done very easily if you're on the side of your body like I am doing already. If you're trying to do that while you're flat on your back and you're trying to defend the choke and defend the opponent's positioning and you're trying to dig your elbows in, you're kind of dealing with too many things at once. So if you do want to start escaping, then you, you have to remember you have to lay one leg down, tilt your hips and your back a little bit up to one side, you just pick a side, and then now you can easily work your elbow inside the opponent's thigh right here. All right, guys. So now from this position, I'm going to start uh, enacting the escape. I'm going to connect the toes of my flat leg to the floor so I can generate power. I'm going to move my kneecap right behind Cobrinha's uh, toes here. And I'm going to even use my other leg pushing against the floor to generate power and force Cobrinha's leg out. In the event that Cobrinha's leg does fall right on top of my leg right here, this is, free, this is a free half guard or free skate. But most of the time, especially in Cobrinha's case, you're fighting against someone who's very skilled. His foot is probably just going to stay connected to my kneecap like, like so, which is enough space. It's just enough for me to collect his leg. And so, guys, if you don't have too much flexibility, you can still escape from this position. All you have to do is just use the back of your ankle, collect his leg straight into the half guard, or just squeeze it with your thighs. I personally recommend squeezing with the thighs because if you lock your legs, you're kind of trapping yourself in the half guard. And you're, if your opponent is, uh, is very skilled, he's still going to make the best of the situation and attack you. So now, while you're squeezing the opponent's legs, all you have to do is then make a hook underneath the leg right here, underneath the ankle. I'm using my instep. And I'm going to hand off Cobrinha's entire leg to my bottom leg in the form of a butterfly hook. Once I get this butterfly hook, I'm going to shift Gurinha's weight backwards. I'm already framing against his body, framing against his upper body to protect myself, framing against the knee so that Gurinha doesn't move very easily. And then now, if you see my back leg right here, I'm going to just straighten my body, get my foot in the hip, and then now, depending on how crazy my opponent's going to go, I can either sweep or just get home base, the close guard. And then now I'm in safety. I can start to work my attacks, I can start to work my sweep.